nice that you all came here to our last talk in the, at this day at, at the Phosphogy. Here are some people from the OSU Live team, not all of them, some are in the audience and um, we are happy to work on this project and we had already a great success here at Phosphogy because so many workshops ran with OSU Live in the first days of the conference and we had bootable USB drives, we had um, ISO images running uh, with VirtualBox and it was a good success and I think most of the workshops went very good and we could show the people yeah, so many great software and geodata in action with OSU Live. Most of us are working on the project since quite a while now and we want to tell you in this talk the news in the project and what we did so far. Angelos, you right. can start. I'll use this one here. Thank you very much. So I'll give a short introduction. And uh, we have here Astrid, Vicky and Nicolas uh, who are PSC members. Uh, so what is OSGO Live? OSGO Live is uh, a, a Linux dis distribution, basically. So what we do is we take uh, an, a, a stable Ubuntu version, the latest LTS, and we build a distribution on top of it with uh, all those geo projects, uh, community projects, and other projects that are affiliated or not affiliated, but they're very useful. So we are trying to make Exactly that, a distribution of, of the best software that is available in open source geospatial. So what are the components? So we have more than 50 open source uh, geospatial ap applications. We include in the ISO the sample, the sample data sets. We have documentation about uh, which is uh, split into overviews and quick starts. So you can find detailed information about the project you want to test and use, uh, but also you can find the quick starts, which are like small tutorials that you can run within five or 10 minutes uh, to get you started with a, with a project. And of course, we, will ha we have translations, and uh, Vicky and Nicolas will talk a bit later about this, so I will not give you much detail. Uh, so we deliver the OSGO Live in basically two formats because DVD now is not very widely used. <laughs> so we create an ISO. An ISO file can be written into a, a DVD. So in cases you want, uh, you have an, an old PC with a DVD, you can write the ISO to the DVD. But uh, mostly uh, we use a live uh, USB version. So you can create a bootable uh, USB drive where you can uh, start your machine without uh, the need to install anything. You can try it. Uh, uh, live, as, as our name is. And of course, we deliver a virtual machine to you in case you want to, to, to use it in, in another environment. So basically, we are looking for uh, established, stable, and working software because we want the, it, it's a marketing tool for us. We want uh, people who will try OSDO Live to be able to, to find uh, very stable and working software uh, that meets their criteria. So we are looking for active communities and we have metrics for that and we, we use um, we use a, we, we use a, a, a system of, of metrics to to, to, uh, to check the projects. So we have a production pipeline. Basically, as I said, we take the the, the latest Ubuntu and we we build Debian packages on top of, of, of that. Uh, we pull stuff from Debian GIS. We also maintain Ubuntu GIS as part of the project. And then we include this to the, to the new ISO. We have installers for all the software in there. Uh, those installers can work individually. So you can, if you want to know how to install, for example, Map Server, you can find in the source code of OSG Live how to do it. Uh, it might be a small process or longer process depending on the project, but it's a very good way of, you know, getting to know how to install and use a, a project, an OSGO project. So what's new here? We have updated the, the Ubuntu distribution to the latest LTS that was actually released three days before we do the release. So we have uh, problems in the last minute, but that, those were solved. We up upgraded most of the most of the core projects uh, from Debian and Ubuntu. 
So we now have QGIS 3, we have uh, a, late, a latest GDAL, uh, PRODS 5, uh, PostGIS, GRASS, GeoServer, all these uh, projects got an update. And we have new projects included, GeoEXT, Actinia, Mapcast, and T-Rex, which actually is missing here. Uh, so we also had documentation updates, we included data from OSM, we have uh, a lot of uh, good geo data science packages uh, that are included in Jupyter, which is now in, which has been in the disk for a while, and uh, you can find a full change log log here. So now Astrid will give you an overview of uh, of what is in the disk. And okay. Thank you, Astrid. Good. So let's have a look what we have. Um, you know, you're sure that this is yeah, important? Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, OSG Life is run by OSGU. So we are a project of OSGU. So we made an incubation as well, like all the other projects. And you should know OSGU by now after some days at the conference. So, um, We are an open source geospatial GNU um, distribution, and we follow OGC standards. So you have to, uh, you can find out about OGC standards as well when you uh, use OGU Live. And now let's have a look at the projects. So um, we start. We have um, some categories how we can um, um, look at them. So at first we look at desktop GIS applications. So if you're looking for desktop GIS, you find several different projects that you could use um, to set up your desktop application to view, edit, and analyze your data. I think most of the projects you discovered here at the conference and found out about them. So we had a lot of talks about QGIS, which, which has a very big community, GrassGIS, they celebrated their 35th birthday, and GVSIG, UDIG, OpenJump, which is quite a while around, and the Saga project. Then, um, yeah, if you go through the slides, you can find out about every project, and uh, as well in our documentation, you find on every project um, an introduction, as Angela said already. Um, so let's have a look at the browser-facing GS applications. So if you want to go from your desktop to the web, you find uh, browser-facing um, applications that could offer editing functionality as well or only view functionality. So you have lightweight applications, you have a script applications like open layers or leaflet. You have Cesium for 3D visualization, and you have several applications that offer um, GeoPortal frameworks like GeoMayas, MapBender, new in the group, it's GeoX, thanks to Thes, who is here in the audience as well. And we have GeoMoose and um, GeoNode, which uh, is also able to handle metadata and um, goes through the whole publishing process. Equip you view at the pro projects. So let's have a look. So here are open layers and leaflet, cesium for 3D, GeoMayas, MapBender, which helps you to set up applications for your needs, GeoX, which is new, and GeoMoose and GeoNode. Then next step, we go and have a look at the web services. So we have many, many applications that provide services or you can uh, access to services. And here we have so many that they don't fit on the slide, as you can see. So we have GeoServer and MapServer as powerful applications that support a lot of the standards, WMS for sure, WFS, WPF, and PF, oh, PS, and some more. We have MapCache, which is new, which is connected to MapServer and provides caching. We have Degree, which supports several services as well. NCWMS, EOX Server, GeoNetwork for metadata, PyCSV, um, as well, and let's see, no, I have to scroll like this. So map server, map cache, degree, which offers a lot of standards as well, NCWMS, EOX server, geo network for metadata, PyCSW, 
and pi WPS. Map proxy, if you want to proxy your services, this is very useful. And um, QGIS server offers um, also a production line from QGIS desktop to QGIS server. So you, if you are a desktop user, this may be very helpful for you. Ist SOS. And uh, 25, uh, 22 North SOS. 52, 52. oh God, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not well prepared. 52 North WPS. And uh, the Zoo project, it's a project which is in incubation. It offers a lot of functionality as well. T-Rex, which offers you to provide tiles. It's a, it's, a it's a new one as well, so you, you should have a look. And um, Actinia, which is new as well, which offers you to uh, process um, raster data in the cloud. So we have a lot of data stores that are available. PostGIS, you should know for sure. Spatial light to store data in a lightweight um, file system. Rasterman for raster data and PG routing, which Vicky represents and is pro working on. So have a look. So we have several clients that you can use to access the data. And here you have a screenshot of piggy routing as well. So navigation and, and maps, you see several projects. We are happy to, um, I, maybe I'm do it a bit quicker. So we're happy to have OpenStreetMap with, uh, with, with you live. Um, we can add data, um, OpenStreetMap data each time we update the data to fit to the Phosphor-G conference, ship with OpenStreetMap. We have ID editor, JOSM, and other tools. So um, also we have GPS Prune to handle GPS data, Marble as a desktop application um, to view data on the globe, and OpenCPN. Mm. So, oh, let's see. OpenStreetMap, ID Editor to uh, generate OpenStreetMap data and edit OpenStreetMap data, JOSM as well as OpenStreetMap Editor, OpenCPN for um, navigation, maps. navigation map, yeah. So GMT. No, it's a uh, already, yeah. Ah, sorry, sorry. So we have some spatial tools that you can s use: GMT, OTB, R, Mapnik, and Map Slicer. So um, some of them you saw here as well. So GMT. Maybe someone else add some words about GMT. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we don't yeah. know uh, no, no, each GMT, project. GMT is for doing geographical transformations in general. So it's a command line tool you know, that we can use from the command line. Then we have our Orfeo toolbox, which is for remote sensing, processing. Uh, R, maybe Nicolas? Yeah, R is a statical, uh, is the programming language for statistical. Uh, and computation, but it can do uh, also maps and reporting and data analysis. So we have Mapnik. You can create great maps for OpenStreetMap, for example, with Mapnik. Map Slicer to create um, map, map tiles. Yeah. And you have SciGrip for weather forecast data mm -hmm. to a, a handle weather forecast data could look like this, quite impressing. And as we said already, we have a lot of data that you can um, use in the workshops. So uh, it's very useful um, because you don't have to add your own data. And um, we have National Earth data um, with data from all around the world, political um, um, areas and um, raster data as well. And we have a North Carolina educational and data set that you can use, OpenStreetMap data, and net CDF data as well with um, temperature information and other information. So some libraries we have. For sure we have GDL, OGR um, included. We have the GeoTools library, we have Geos, Approach 4, it still says, but it's Approach 5, as we heard. We have Liblas and um, JTS. So, let's so. talk about translations and documentation now. Yeah. Okay. Um, this uh, project, as you can see, is a uh, multi 
multi, it has everything, it has everything. And we are not all the owners of all the knowledge. So what we do is we gather team of people to help us to improve the, especially the quick starts and the people from the projects to go and make a look to the overview to have it with the information up to date. But we are in, a, in this world and we want to communicate all that information to all the people, to other countries, other languages, other cultures. And we set up a translation uh, account in Transifex. This year we have three new languages with the the decision to add those languages or to be adding languages is that at least they have to have 33% of it translated. So which means that for these three new languages which, is, which are Hungarian, Japanese and the language that they speak in Finland, I think in English is Finnish. I, it has a special name in, in, in Finland. Um, it means that 66% still needs to be translated, but we want you to reach the people from your country if you are bilingual, if you can see, read the English and translate to your own language, to start working on translating the documentation so that we all get the same information in our home tongue. Um, I don't know if we want to add something. Yeah, I just will go back to the next. The translation is fine, it's very important work, so we can give access to our tools to uh, people who don't, don't have the knowledge in English. And translate it to, uh, I'm French, so I sometimes find easier to to read the documentation in French than in English. So I have the, at least the comprehension in my language. So it's very important. Uh, Angelo uh, speak about packaging. We, we also uh, like when people from the, um, the project help us to package and uh, configure uh, the software we implement. So because we don't know the project as good as you as the developers. So when you come, you come in and you say, okay, change that, change that. Yeah, it helps us a lot. So f we are very glad when you help us to, to do packaging and uh, uh, it serves everybody because it will be in the Ubuntu GIS and Debian GIS uh, repos after that. Uh, you can help us to add new project uh, like uh, we saw uh, just before, we can add new, new projects. You can join us, uh, we do weekly meetings. Uh, your print time is uh, on Tuesdays. Yeah, currently it's on Tuesdays at 11, uh, no, at 9 p.m. UTC, right? <laughs> I, I am not good with UTC times, <laughs> but uh, right. we do ARC meetings uh, every Tuesdays. You can check out on the internet and join us. You're free to join. Everybody is welcome. Uh, you have a mailing list if you have questions, if you have uh, suggestions, please do suggestions. Say, oh, okay, we'll do that. Uh, I would like to improve the documentation. Okay, Kim, Kim. We, we are open to everything. Uh, we have a lot of sponsors, of course, the OZEO, the uh, UCDC, I see. Uh, yeah, California for, University. Yeah. yeah, it's California University to help us for servers to provides uh, room for our ISOs, uh, the Debian GIS team, of course, Okanos. Uh, yeah, it's a service provider for uh, for virtualization and, and cloud. They provide us with the build servers for the project. The Republic is the <laughs> Vicky is Yeah, the that, uh, we have the fortune that uh, the company that I work with allows me to work during my normal office hours to work with the team so that sometimes um, well in this case the company is also giving support to the project yeah so thanks to our sponsors 
it would be very hard without us. Uh, we'd so like to yeah, we, we skipped the PSC. So yeah. this is the project steering committee for OSG Live. Uh, and well, we would like to thank all the contributors and translators. And actually, we have a translator here uh, today who did 100% translation on yeah. his own, right? Yeah, Zoltan, <laughs> please come. We, we, yeah. we want to know. Yeah, so it's Zoltan Siki yeah. from Hungary. He's involved in OSG Live since a long time, I guess. So we, before we went to Trunzifex, we worked on SVN. And at that time, Hungarian was... 100% translated as well, or more or less, but now you worked hard on it, Sultan, and uh, do you think it's in use in Hungary a lot, the documentation? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, my aim was we have an OSGO lab where mostly I teach Hungarian students, partly uh, foreign students, and I, my aim is to give them mm -hmm. the, on the local language. It's, it's a barrier for the Hungarians, sometimes, mm -hmm. the English. They usually can buy food in the supermarket, but they don't understand enough the technical English. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Sarvan. And, and thanks to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Sam. Maybe thanks to all contributors, maybe we can... Who is the contributor? You yeah, co please come in. Yeah. Contributors, please, come in, please. please contribute. Yeah, yeah. Seth, <laughs> okay. Zoltan, so it's Kim. not only the If you PSC. have contributed to translate, Kim, can I like think to Tom has already has a, some commits there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom? Who else? Maybe, yeah. Till, maybe, you no? Know? No, are you sure? Do we want? Do you want us to open GitHub and, and check <laughs> one by one? <laughs> anyway, it's all about us, the community of OSGO. Uh, we all contribute in our way by producing uh, great software. So thank you for your help, and uh, ho hopefully we'll get new projects and we'll get uh, bigger in time. Yeah. So um, from the number 13, you saw that we are uh, at our um, 13 years of releasing OSGO. Sometimes. Uh, since some years ago, we released every half a year, but now we switch to every year. So version 14 will be ready in one year for Phosphogy in Calgary. So you have time to add your language or your project, do the translation and get your project ready. And we welcome you to do so. So enjoy your, your life. And, and questions. Questions. Uh, yeah, if yeah. you have questions. Uh, they were response. <laughs> So, so, uh, yes. So you know, you mentioned that you you use uh, thirty three uh, percent uh, of the strings. But for example, how do you manage uh, the aspect, uh, the question? Uh, uh, for example, for Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese, um, do you acknowledge such a request? And, and then, how do you? Because potentially there's a. Um, you could use the Portuguese uh, 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 translations for the other sixty six percent. So, is it, can you say something about that? Okay, um, that's a question for me. Uh, there is one thing that uh, you know that everything basically is volunteers' work. So sometimes our volunteers have or make a lot of time to do that volunteering, and things get done at the end. For example, in Spanish, it, I did, I couldn't improve from the eighty percent translated in. Version 12, it kept to, to be 80% translated in, in version 13 because I had other duties to accomplish. I didn't have that time. I couldn't find an additional person to finish that 20%. But it's with the mind to tell the community, please help translate. Please help translate. And when there is a, another percentage of translation completed is like we're going to try to update at least the website documentation it's not a promise about the contents of the ISO but at least in the website documentation to try to update if our language is working hard let's publish that uh, that documentation so that progress 
is because we're volunteers and it depends on our times, private times, yes. So, so yep. can I, can I, because it was not specifically the question, I, I was targeting the, really the, the Portuguese for, versus Brazilian Portuguese or Dutch versus Flemish and um, so, so the languages are quite similar but do you uh, allow that other language or do you want the, the languages to be combined because you, you split the, the community in two if you have yeah. two languages. We had the re can I yes. answer? Yeah, we had the request as well for Chinese, so they have different styles of Chinese, it looks like. And as not we want to do the work, but the people from that language, maybe they should discuss whether it, I can't decide whether Chinese, it makes sense to have two versions or three or so, or Portuguese as well. So <laughs> maybe the local teams, they should think about whether it makes sense to provide two versions, that means two more work, or whether one version is enough. And um, maybe that's that happened with Spanish. There's a Spanish, there's Spanish from Mexico, Spanish from Spain, Spanish from Argentina, and we, our Spanish are different, but we can understand each other. So right now it's the Spanish. And whoever translates that, that one is used. But to go to translating to Spanish from Argentina, which is a very, the, the major changes are the verbs, termination. So basically it's going to be easy to do a copy paste, upload to Transifex, and have a person from Argentina to check and change to the way that they're translating. I, I see that part uh, easy. So kind of focus on a general thing that all the different um, types can understand first and then go local. Yeah, and maybe, or I think we have to, yeah, to close absolutely. soon. Maybe one thing should get clear from our presentation. So we are quite busy in our life and we try to provide everything for you as projects to contribute or as translators to, pro to contribute, but we need you all to help and do the work as well, or testing as well as is, is a big topic as well. So, yeah, so you are welcome all to join the team and help to get version 14 ready. And, and if you have a new demo, please contribute because we have some demos that are a bit outdated and that's also not looking good in some cases. So if you have a new demo, even if your project is in there, please contribute it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.